Uh, good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the June 25th, 2024 Administrative Services Committee meeting. Um, Addie, if you would do the roll, I would appreciate it. Tom? Present. Petrus. Here. Kuda. Here. And also in attendance tonight are council members Gail Larson, Jim Posh, and Anthony Maddox. Our agenda has been um, posted on the website. Uh, the first item for discussion this evening is an identification of the uh, current vacancies and or appointments to boards, commissions, and committees that uh, need to be made. Um, and I handed out a document that's not uh, posted, but I will make sure that it is posted tomorrow that will identify all of our boards, uh, commissions, and committees um, that are, are either under our charter or have been established by ordinance or legislation. Uh, at the present time, it is my understanding that we have uh, one vacancy on our landmark commission and we have um, vacancies on our um, climate and sustainability committee and our transportation and mobility committee. There are three vacancies on each of those um, committees. Um, under the legislation that was passed at our meeting last night, those are appointments that are now to be made by council uh, versus the mayor. Uh, that legislation, as I understand it, does not take effect for 30 days. Um, but I thought this evening um, we should go ahead and discuss all of the outstanding applicants, whether they came to us by way of uh, applying to the mayor or um, by way of applying to a uh, city council. I, I think at least in one case, there was uh, some overlap um, in terms of uh, where they applied and the mayor did submit four names to us that uh, as the council president indicated last night, uh, we would go ahead and um, consider them um, at, in the event that uh, uh, the legislation does become effective and council makes the appointment. Uh, I had invited the mayor. Um, I don't know if he is aware that we got started or not. And um, because I did want to give him an opportunity to um, discuss why appointments that he has have not been made um, to not only the, the Climate and Sustainability and Transportation and Mobility Committee, but also uh, the Arts Commission uh, and the Community Improvement uh, Corporation and the uh, lead, lead Safe Advisory Board. Lead Safe Advisory Board. And if anyone was watching the prior committee meetings, he did touch on um, some reasons for that. And on cue, <laughs> uh, Mayor, before you, uh, the mayor has just joined us. Uh, mayor, I was just uh, telling anyone that's watching on TV that um, I had uh, uh, asked you to come to the meeting to um, share with us. And I know you did have a little bit of conversation at our prior committee of the whole meeting to share with us um, why there had been a delay in the, uh, getting us the appointments to the Climate and Sustainability Committee and the Transportation and Mobility Committee. And I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to address that as well as the other vacancies that you have appointments for um, on the Arts Commission, uh, the Community Improvement Corporation, and the uh, Let's Safe Advisory Board. Yeah, if, if, if you want to share the reasons for that, sure. that would be great. So first, and when it comes to any of these boards, I'd like to, I don't know, um, take some exception to the idea that there was a delay because there was no time frame. Um, there was no time frame indicated. I think uh, in, in the initial legislation, so I, I, I take an exception to that a little bit, but I recognize that um, it took longer and it is taking longer than uh, some of the council may have comfort with. And so I would like to address the reasons for how much time it has taken and is taking. So specifically um, with the climate 
uh, an environmental sustainability committee, there were people that I was specifically targeting for recruitment. People with, um, I'm not gonna mention names right now, but there were people in particular that I wanted to consider being on this board because of their expertise, not just, you know, traditional expertise or sort of, a, you know, what we call hobbyist or enthusiast expertise, I guess, um, but specific professional and current work that people are doing right now. Um, so that was my goal. My goal was to engage in a population that we rarely engage with. And that is people who are working at the regional, at the state, and at the national, and, and actually in one case at the international level, um, directly in these fields uh, with expertise who can bring current work and current experience to the table. Um, because historically, you know, the lowest hanging fruit are the people who have a lot of time to offer. We see it on council. You know, no, and it's, it's not an insult, it's just... Yeah. People who are retired have more time to spend on that, and that's fine. It's just it also skews a bit the perspective. And so looking for people who um, are sort of currently in, in engaged in that work was a goal of mine. Um, and trying to target that kind of person, especially the people who are doing work like well outside of our borders, takes time and energy. Uh, and that's primarily the reason why it has taken so long to, to come up with this list of three for the Climate and Environmental Sustainability Committee. Now, the other committee, I'm not sure, um, like I, I know there's been a characterization of the number of applicants for the Transportation and Mobility Committee being a lot of really great applicants, and maybe that's the case from one perspective, but again, from my perspective, from the perspective of somebody who's trying to target a particular type of voice that has historically not been included in the boards and commissions that we have here, um, it really wasn't a great list to pick from. Now, there are some people on that list, additionally, that I'm surprised council didn't pick over some of the people you did. Um, but yeah, the, the other thing that complicated the issue for me uh, with the Transportation and Mobility Committee is that council appointed four men to this committee. And, you know, I get that what we want to do is appoint really talented, experienced people who can provide input that would be valuable. Um, and, yeah, in a perfect world, gender wouldn't be a consideration and it's not a consideration, but it also has to be a consideration because people have different perspectives based on their characteristics, based on their experiences. Um, one of the, I think one of the examples that I mentioned to you when we talked over the weekend was, you know, let's say we're talking about, you know, transit and we're talking about the distance from the stop to, you know, the next leg of the journey. And, you know, I know my experience walking from that transit stop to wherever that next leg of the journey picks up might be different late at night than a woman's experience might be because of the treatment that women have endured in our society, uh, violence against women. And that's a perspective that I might not bring to the table sort of innately I might not think, if we're having a conversation, I might not have that. I might because I'm sensitive to that sort of thing, but I'm not living it. And so it was important for me to go back out to try to do some additional targeted recruiting so that I could have a larger and fuller pool of applicants to consider. And that's another thing that the council historically has not done. In fact, there have been times when you know, you've had a, a list of applicants and maybe there was a question about what often comes up, geographic diversity, right? <laughs> and I've been in a position where I've asked council, okay, well, right now 
you don't have very many people who've applied from this particular area of town that you're trying to target, that you would like to have more applicants from, can you maybe extend the deadline and do some additional, you know, substantive targeted recruiting so that you can have a larger applicant pool from which to consider and find the best candidates that also have that perspective. And I've been denied that. You know, it's it's been asked, it's been answered, and we don't generally tend to do that here. But that's something that I thought was important to do, especially with the majority of that particular committee being men. Now, the person that I initially um, introduced as, a, as an uh, appointment for council to consider for that committee, Sam Bell, I thought that his historical knowledge, his um, participation in the things like the climate, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the Vision Zero work, the Complete and Green Streets policy, um, I think we needed that bridge. And I recognize that these go until the end of 25. Uh, but I think that we need that bridge and whether the same roster of individuals remains at the end of 2025, that I don't know. But I think that at the very least, uh, it was a good idea to include Sam Bell in the next iteration of the Transportation and Mobility Committee. So, but I still think it's important and that's why I've proactively gone out and continued to recruit um, for a more diverse set of applicants. And I'm receiving some applications that are specific with that, that those characteristics in mind to try to ensure that we have the widest representation that we can. Um, and that generally tends to be my goal, wide representation and the combination of wide representation and expertise. That's what I'm looking for. Um, when it comes to other committees, like for instance, when I drafted the Arts Commission legislation, um, creating that uh, you know, commission of the city, I knew that arts can be an important thing. Now, I also recognize that arts has been ignored for decades in this city. Say the entire life of Heights Arts, for instance, the last 20 years. Now, the first 10 years, there were, you know, several different public art um, installations that Heights Arts took on. I don't know that they had much cooperation or involvement by the city. I don't think that they really needed the city to get that work done. The last 10 years has been a lot less of that. Um, and the city, again, has not really been all that involved. Um, you know, my, my first step is to put out an application, see what hits we get. Um, I think, unfortunately, I'll say, probably the way that this started, the manufactured controversy about the Arts Commission in the first place has made it a little bit more difficult for people to even want to apply. And that's unfortunate. But what that takes is just a little bit more work to try to get more and more people who, again, have not necessarily been doing things here, but, you know, we are the home to the arts. So we've got a lot of residents who do work elsewhere. Um, and reaching out to those people proactively and making space for them is important. But I, like I said in the previous committee meeting, I'm not interested in, oh, well, we got five seats, I got five applicants, we're done. To me, that is not a good faith uh, effort to really represent this city with the best expertise that we can possibly get. So that's a rationale right there. Um, you know, I don't want to monopolize the time. We can have more conversation about it. And, and frankly, I know that sometimes people feel differently. And sometimes, like with the CAC, you and I have been through this. Um, you get X number of applications and nobody else wants to do it. What are you going to do? You know, the, the, there is a timeline for CAC work. Like we actually do, we, since we've created the CAC as our method of community involvement with HUD on CDBG dollars, we got to fill the seats, right? So 
and there aren't really any qualifications for CAC members. Additionally, that's one of those groups that I don't have to get vetted by an additional council. You know, you guys appoint those. So you can come into an executive session, you can have a conversation, you can say yes or no in public. For me, when I appoint somebody, I'm putting them in front of a council who has not always been, um, say, they, they haven't always avoided a, a bit of antagonism when it comes to appointments. And so I have to be very careful about who I'm putting in front of council um, to make sure that I'm not putting them in a position for them to be embarrassed or uh, for them to be denied with no real explanation. Uh, those things are considerations for me. I don't want to put anybody in that kind of position, so I have to be very careful. Um, and that's another reason why I want to find the absolute best applicants I can so that council has a much more difficult time saying, no, we don't like you that's what it feels like to an applicant who gets refused. Okay. I know you mentioned uh, Sam Bell for the Transportation Mobility Committee. Um, the uh, pending resolutions that we read at council meeting last night identified three other persons. <coughs> uh, could you just touch on their uh, names and qualifications? Sure. Uh, that was uh, Carly Beck, uh, Sean Terry, and I'm going to mispronounce his last name horribly, Muhammad Irfan. Irfan. Yeah, Dr. Muhammad Irfan. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about these individuals. So let me, let me see if I can pull up their info real quick just so I have it. I don't have to try to do that from memory because that's not correct. All of you should have received. Did, did you all receive mm -hmm. their info? Yeah. Okay. And while you're looking, I'll ask the clerk, did, did we post all these applications yet? Uh, no, they've not been posted yet. Okay. Oh. Mr. Chair. Can we redact them yet? Mr. Chair. Yes. While the mayor is looking that up, uh, he did state something, and I've been curious about it myself as we were looking at this list. I know that, as he discussed, that one of the reasons we switched this legislation yesterday uh, was because of his timing with this. Looking at this very extensive list and the amount of openings that we have in terms of legislation, I, I think it's prudent even now more than ever for this council to put in its own guardrails. So my question is this, um, we never gave a timeline for his appointments. We don't have a timeline for our own. Um, based on where we are right now, it still looks pretty hypocritical what was done yesterday, considering we haven't handled our own responsibilities and Youth Advisory Commission doesn't have anyone at all. So my question to this council is, you, you've done this legislation for the mayor. What are we doing for ourselves to hold ourselves accountable? What is our time frame for selections? Uh, we still haven't given one for the mayor and we've removed those appointments, but we don't. So I, I just have an expectation that that needs to be discussed. So you, you wrote res legislation out to remove this out of impatience. So I just want to make sure that we're having a discussion around what we're going to do. I want to make sure that I can bring that back to the public to explain why we haven't held ourselves accountable but the administration for the amount of gaps and openings that we have in all these boards and commissions. This is unreal to me. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take that up at a, at a future meeting. Some of these um, are essentially inactive and the legislation has not has not been repealed and so that does need to get cleaned up. But, I mean, you are correct and the mayor was correct there that none of these... Um, with the exception of appointments to city council, there are no timeline requirements or deadlines to make any appointments, appointments. be they council appointments or mayor appointments. Yes, President. Just real quickly, I don't remember, you remember this? This was at the last meeting, but it might have been two or three months ago. This was one of the things we were going to talk about. Uh, here, I'll give you a copy. One of the things we talked about, I don't know if it was the, it, I don't know if it was the last meeting or the meeting before, was we, we talked about um, uniform standards. Uh, you see that the thing yes, yeah. down. And, you know, we started the conversation, but we didn't, I don't know, I don't think we got real far, but at least we started, it was, it was something we were, we were yeah. aware of that we needed to do. And then there were, you know, a process for going through um, you know, looking for new members, 
you know, seeking out residents to serve, making recommendations to the rest of council, interviewing prospective members, reviewing applications, speaking with the chairs uh, on an annual basis right. about diversity and so forth. So that was all discussed. I, mean, I know we didn't get anywhere, and I, I agree we need we do need to finish that conversation and make some decisions and possibly, and we also, I remember we, we printed out 111. Um, that's not it, but we, that was the, that was supposed to be the upshot of this. You know, what do we need to do to, you know, to codify, um, what we're doing? I don't know what, oh no, I've, I've seen, yeah, I, was, I was on the, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, yes. That, that's why I asked because I thought it was strange because we hadn't finished that process, but then we just bid legislation for the mayor. So it's just odd that before we if administrative service committee finishes process, we arbitrarily made these decisions. Those are the things that I'm trying to avoid in the future. So, uh, let, let's hear from Mr. Patros and then I'll come to you. Mr. Chair, thank you very much for pulling together um, these boards and commissions. This is very helpful. Um, I'd be happy to help put this into a spreadsheet and add four additional columns to this um, that I think would make it um, even more helpful. So I'm envisioning columns that say something like council appointed vacant, council appointed filled, mayoral appointed vacant, mayoral appointed filled, so that we could more easily visualize where there are gaps because I my, my understanding is that there's one on the Landmarks Commission. Um, we know that there are three on each of um, TAM and the Climate and Sustainability Committee, but I think that that would um, make it even better. Um, and then we could from there decide, okay, we have these vacancies, let's try to um, recruit people um, for these. And these other ones that are inactive, we could then decide what we want to do, whether it's repeal them or something different from that. So I would be happy to help with putting this into a spreadsheet. Sure, so I'm gonna hear from Ms. Larson, and then let's get back to the, the mayor. To the mayor, so he can um, uh, discuss the candidates. Well, why can we can do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we mm -hmm. momentarily got sidetracked from that, Mayor. Yeah. Um, well, I, I appreciate the anticipation that there will be any mayoral appointments in, in your spreadsheet. You, you seem to indicate that there might be in the future, so I appreciate that. Um, and I, and I will say, if you if you do look to repeal some of those, I would caution you. Like right now, for instance, the Fair Practices Board, um, which needs people because we are actually getting complaints. Like we have a, a, a pay to stay ordinance, we have a, a source of income protection ordinance, and when people are denied housing because of the type of income that they're presenting to their landlord, there needs to be a place for those people to go. And right now there isn't. And it's been that way for a long time. Um, so th that's the sort of thing it's, I guess, been inactive. But it needs to not be. Yeah. We have a need for that. I put a question mark there because the last information I had was that there were two people that were um, uh, appointed to that board whose terms um, may not have expired or they've continued. So we're going to have to reach out and, and, and get it. This predates you. This predates me. Yeah, but I, to my knowledge, we, I'm not aware of any complaints that have been filed that would have been referred to that board. I'm aware of people presenting concerns. And I'll have specifics right now, and I wouldn't present them in this forum anyway. Um, but, but that's the sort of thing that, I, you know, we, we all do need to take better care of this. I think your idea of having sort of a, a more well-outlined um, set of where the appointments are, whether they're vacant or not, it's a good idea. That's something that we can place on the website for all to see and update regularly. Um, you know, it, and that kind of thing. So I, I think it's important to do that. Um, so shifting back, I think I'm gonna start with Sean Terry. Now you all got his um, application materials. And some of you may have met him. Um, I don't know if any of you were present at uh, Caledonia Elementary School's um, ceremony to uh, launch their uh, playground revitalization, sort of making it a more natural playground, I think. Um, 
they are working with the Trust for Public Land on that. It's a wonderful program to uh, provide a little bit more connection to nature um, with, the, with the kids at the elementary school. Um, and Sean Terry is the uh, state director for the Trust for Public Land for the state of Ohio. He lives in our city. Um, I feel that we should take advantage of his expertise, um, his experience, his connections in that world, uh, specifically around, you know, our connection to the natural environment. Because where the Trust for Public Land really shines is creating that connection. So it's not just the, you know, protecting the flower for the flower's sake, although that's important too. It's about protecting the flower and connecting the people to it. And that's something that I think can be a little bit more difficult for, um, for stakeholders, to, stakeholders to really visualize unless they're doing the work. And I think Sean Terry brings that perspective and much more. Now, I don't expect, and I, I hope you don't expect, that I'm going to be going through their experience um, in a way that they would be able to. Because my anticipation is that there will be confirmation hearings that, you know, they'll be able to explain their goals for service on the committee um, and the expertise that they bring to the table uh, relative to the subject matter and how they believe it can contribute. Um, so I don't want to step in their way, but I can, I can give sort of a brief rundown of why I think that they bring something great to the table. Is that... Sure. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, so it, I, I think his experience is also multifaceted and it's, and it's informed by things that make, uh, sort of a salient difference in our ability to, uh, implement the recommendations of this body. He's got planning experience and development experience. And it's coupled with this emphasis on our connection to the natural world and protecting the natural world so that we can continue to enjoy it. Um, that this combination of experience isn't just, you know, yes, we need to do this for these reasons, for these sort of, you know, higher level, um, you know, almost academic reasons but they are grounded in practical application because he is doing practical application all the time in his work. I think that that's an important component um, to be added to this committee because we're still a city. We're a city government. We've got a lot on our plate. There's a lot that we want to do. There's a lot that we can't do right now. Um, there's a lot that we can't solve. And so we have to pick our battles. Um, you know, we don't have unlimited resources. We don't have, you know, even when it comes to our, you know, our, our great resource, our residents, even that isn't unlimited. Um, and so in this case, having somebody with strategic experience, implementation experience, I think that'll help us get to the real recommendations that we can implement and an understanding of you know, actual practical application and practical difficulties in implementing recommendations. So that's why I think uh, Mr. Terry is a very, very important addition to this. Um, and I don't know, I, that's another thing. Like we're 40% black in this city. I know that's not a qualification, but I'm supposed to do, uh, you know, my best effort to reflect our community in these appointments. Um, Mr. Terry is a young black man, well, relatively young, relative to me, a little bit. Not really, maybe a little bit. Um, and, and I think that that's a, also a, an important perspective to have in this city where we are 40% black. Um, so that was, you know, not the defining consideration for me, but I think it's important that we pay attention to that. Um, Next, I'm going to... What, what neighborhood is he in? Oh, goodness. I don't even remember what the street is called. 
Um, I mean, we can find out. We're just yeah, yeah, and I, I, I sent them redacted. Um, they should be. But, I get it. Yeah, but we can. I can. I can give that to you. Well, let's just just look at everything from the whole. Okay. Um, He's on Dartmoor. Okay. His linked application and the thing is not redacted. Just you know. Um, whoops. Okay. So uh, Carly Beck is somebody who hasn't been a resident here for a long time. And I think that that's an interesting perspective to have, too. Um, somebody who chose to be here probably could have selected a wide variety of other places, as could Sean Terry, um, and, and chose to be here in our city. I think her experience to me, and that, that, I'll, I'll put it this way. Let me, let me clarify something for you. I don't know on a personal level any of these people well. You know, I've had conversation, but these aren't people that I have long social, you know, relationships with or anything like that. Um, and so there's a lot I'm not going to know about their background in terms of, you know, their experience growing up and that sort of thing. But um, I am focused on these people's practical, professional experience because these people stood out to me uh, based on what they do. Um, so, Senior Manager of Planning and Environment for the Port of uh, Cleveland. And I don't know, that seems like a get to me. Doing the planning and environment work for the Port of Cleveland is, um, in, in, and currently, like we, we've got people on boards and commissions that have valuable experience, uh, you know, looking at some of the, the people who have led NOACA in the past or planning here even, like that's really uh, impressive experience. Um, and so what I think is that we should couple that with current experience, with current professional experience doing this kind of work. Um, you know, the, the kind of work that Carly Beck does, again, comes down to practical application. This is somebody who can, who is currently doing strategic planning around environmental initiatives for the port. And they do great work. The, the, honestly, the port does great work and they have consistently for a while. Um, I think that that presents just a really phenomenal addition to the skills that are present on that board. Um, I mean, you can read the application, um, biology, environmental science, project management professional. This is somebody who can bring practical application to the table as well. This is somebody who, um, when they make recommendations to the administration and to council, um, their perspective will add a degree of practicality that we will likely be able to just simply wrap our arms, our arms around and get some things done. And that's what I do. You know, that's what mayors, mayors get it done, right? So I'm interested in people who can help me get it done. Um, so moving on, Mohammed Irfan. This man, um, PhD from Case, has done some wild stuff to me. Um, consultant for the World Bank for an industrial decarbonization study. Like this is where you get the real sort of academic rigor um, that I don't see how we turn down. Um, you know, this is the, the person who can validate some stuff for us. This is the person that Dr. Boateng will be able to have conversations with that he might not be able to have conversations with anybody else on the committee. Um, so, you know, Again, and, and, and as an entrepreneur, um, somebody who brings a different perspective to the table, somebody who, who brings uh, the perspective of somebody who is out there helping, you know, uh, as, as a CEO, um, helping other organizations decarbonize. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we want here, I would assume. It's the kind of thing I want here. Um, 
I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go into his CV. If you looked at his CV, it's like, you know, a million pages long. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll take it back to this question of including voices that we don't normally. Um, you know, this is uh, an, an Asian man. Um, not an American citizen, I don't believe. Um, and if he is, my apologies, but I don't believe so. Um, and somebody with skills and experience all across the globe that, I'm sorry, we, we just don't normally see on our boards and commissions. Um, I don't know, if you have any questions about his CV, um, you should probably ask him about them. I'm impressed. I'll put it that way. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, do uh, we want to go into executive session to discuss all of the applicants? If so, I would need someone to make a motion to do that. Mr. Chair, I motion that we go into executive session uh, to consider the appointment of a public official. Second. Could you do a roll call? You're not on the committee. Yeah, you're not. Sorry. I'm just kidding. I'll second that. <laughs> can, I, can I second it as yeah, chair? Yeah, yeah. I guess I should have made the motion. Uh, Cobb. Aye. Petrus. Aye. Kuda. Aye. All right. And, um, Folks, if you're watching on TV, um, because of the uh, the time, when we complete the executive session, we're not going to uh, come back and have any further public discussion. Uh, we will pick up from the discussion on procedures and um, the, uh, addressing the other vacancies at, at the next uh, committee meeting, and we may have one in July. Um, depending upon whether we have all the council members available to attend. Okay, we have concluded the executive session. Um, our next uh, meeting would be on the last uh, Tuesday in July. I'm sorry, a month, what is today? Today is, two, yeah, the last Tuesday in July, which would be the 30th. And it's, uh, is it currently on the uh, calendar? Uh, no, it is currently not. Because of our recess, so. Actually, wouldn't it be the 29th? The 29th. 29th. Is that when I've been meeting? Oh, the 30th, Mondays? the 30th, no, the sorry, 30th. the 30th. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, it's not on our calendar. Though. So um, I'll discuss with the council president uh, about whether we're going to meet. Uh, but look, while I have all the members here, what's your preference? Shall we go ahead and have that meeting? I mean, I'm fine with it. I am out of town that um, previous weekend, and I get back on Monday. So if we were looking at Monday the 29th, I would not be available. On the 30th, Tuesday the 30th, I am available. Oh, no, that's right. Normally, I've been meeting you the last to, month. Yeah. So, you, are you wanting to switch to Tuesday? Or? Um, that's why I was saying the 29th. What's uh, What's the preference of the other committee members? I mean, I'm happy to meet. It's at the end of July. Um, like I said, so long as it's not on the yes. 29th. Thank you for coming. All right. So do you want to the 30th? <laughs> yeah, why don't we go ahead and Is schedule that? it? Thirtieth, like five p.m. Five. Does that work? Yeah, it works. At five, work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, our, our meeting is concluded. We came out of the executive session at about seven oh six. Okay. Uh, for those of you watching, thank you. Our meeting's concluded. <laughs>